Hey guys, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. Some of you know me on Twitter, The Gaming Dragon. Today, happy Thanksgiving, guys. I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Soul Creek. That's right, I wanted to play Soul Creek so much again that I decided to bring it to another episode to you guys a day early. Why not? But one of the things I was um, thinking about when I was just sitting here listening to the menu music, this reminds me of Wolfenstein music, like way back in the day, old school Wolfenstein music. I could legit kind of, maybe in like a Wolfenstein mod, of course, because this... This music sounds, like, way more complicated than old-school Wolfenstein music, but... Like, this is, like, a Wolfenstein, uh, like, mod or something. This is the kind of music that I could, like, imagine being in this, so... Props to whoever did the music in this. You, uh, you tickled my, uh, my... You tickled my, uh, nostalgia gland. <laughs> God, it's a weird thing to say. <laughs> Alright, guys, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Please sit back and enjoy for this 18 minutes to entertain you. Let's jump right in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's friggin' go. All right. <clears throat> I'm converting the raw encrypted data into a comprehensive format and I'm putting it in a heads-up display for you. Everything you know that's attached to the word demon is included on every level of your consciousness. So if there were actual demons in your past, this is where we'll find them. We'll probably get a lot of results back. You should pick a second keyword to go alongside demons just to narrow things down. Uh, real life. Zephyr. Try Zephyr. Okay. Hmm. That didn't make any difference at all. In fact, there's no relative... Of course, because humans didn't call themselves Zephyr. In fact, there's no relevant search... No relevant matches to Zephyr in any way. Meaning... Assuming all this data comes from before the Cascade, it means the word Zephyr is a post-Cascade term. Let's just search for demons and see what we get. Actually, let's, uh... Go back. Uh... Try artificial intelligence. Hmm. No cross matches, but there's a lot of data on artificial intelligence here. So the Zephyr definitely had access to that technology? Absolutely. I mean, look at me. And me, possibly. Eh, if you are a machine, then I'm probably way more advanced than you. Heh, <laughs> jerk. Let's just search for demons and see what we get. Let's see what else we got. <sighs> Try Ilalia. Ilayla. These mountains? Okay. That's weird. No matches. Meaning, assuming all this data comes from before the Cascade, that means that Ilayla is a post-Cascade term. Alright, one more. Real life. How about real life, as in real-life demons? Otherwise, we'll just get a ton of results about demons in fiction. Scanning. Hmm. The data doesn't suggest there's any differentiation between fictional or real demons. The people here certainly seem to think they're real. Could they be magic? What? No, I was joking about the whole magic thing earlier. Whatever they are, they were they will be a logical there will be a logical explanation for them. Let's just search for demons and see what we get. There were seventeen thousand four hundred and sixty two results. Ouch, that's a lot. That's pretty small to be honest. Let's see, we've got results for demons in religion, occultism, literature, fiction, mythology, and folklore. I've got all that on my memory drive I've got all that on my memory drive? Wow. That's the indicator of a well-lived life before, even if we don't have any readable memory data of it. Okay, so, uh, let's try demons and occultism? Alright. Hmm. Entomologically, none of your memories have concrete definition of a demon. Certainly nothing indicates they were ever real. It says here the most common definition is that they're non-human, separate, separ separable souls or discarnate spirits which have never inhabited a body, but are capable of entering relations with mortal races doesn't sound anything like them. So, whatever these creatures are, I've never encountered them before. You know, this could be just a translation issue. Demon might be the closest word our language our language software has to whatever these people actually call these machines. Well, while we're here, can you see anything about beast races? I certainly don't remember them either. We could check some of the archives. Here. Hmm. Nope. Nothing. No memory of beast races. Or any other humans, for that matter. Just you and I. Do you see anything that might have caused the Cascade? Not really. How about the Affliction? Nope, nothing on that either. You really are a blank slate. Oh, so he's a tabula rasa. Alright, let's give it a rest. We tried. You guys hear me sucking on anything? I've got a sore throat, so I'm sucking on a, uh, little throat lozenge or whatever they're called. Got it. Bringing you back. We're back to reality. Uh, Bite? Why is it evening now? Uh, how long were we in there? 
About, oh, um, about seven hours. What? Damn it, Bite! What if Loken had walked in? Sorry, sorry, I didn't realize your human brain would suffer a time dilation. Luckily, Loken hasn't returned yet, but the theater has been pointed at me for hours. I'm sweating. Ugh, I need some air! I flicked the electric heater off and make for the exit, deciding to leave the door open to let some of the mug set some of the muggy heat out. Ah, that's better. Never thought I'd be thankful for some of this cold air. I tugged my hood down to let my head feel the chill. The sky is getting steadily darker, and the more distant mountains are starting to blend into the dusty clouds. Taking care not to irritate my wound, I lower myself down onto the grass and now down onto the grass and sit, elbows on knees with my gaze on the horizon. Soft, whispering wind gently ruffles my hair and kisses my chin, kisses my skin. I hear the occasional birdsong amidst the rustling woods. The sting of the cold feels gratifying now. Its sharpness has become soothing as even the, as the evening settles. I shut my eyes, just taking in the sounds and the smells of the wet moss and pungent wild grass. I have to admit, it's nice here. I can definitely see why Loken might have chosen to live here, away from the village. It doesn't seem like he'd enjoy the, exhaust, the exhaustless bustle of the cat of the clan. It's been like a surreal dream since I woke up. It's not quite a nightmare, but it's not quite a, it's not quite a comforting fantasy either. I don't want to think about it all right now. Just in this small moment, I have this view. It's enough. <laughs> I decide to stay outside for a while. My skin goes numb from the cold, but I don't care. I'm actually starting to enjoy the sensation. I've rolled onto my back, eyes shut and arms spread out into the, into the feathery grass. The light of the day drips into darkness. The anxiety of my situation has melted away. My mind is free from demons, black zones, and zephyr. I'm at peace for just a moment. Alex. Hmm? Alex. What? Wake up. I blink drearily and find myself looking up at a familiar husky. Loken! When did you get back? As I push myself slowly up to my feet, Loken puts his paw down for me to grab. I clasp onto his wrist and he tugs me to my feet. Just now. We awkwardly stare at each other for a moment. I'm expecting him to say something, but he doesn't. Did you, um, did you find anything good in the Black Zone? Medicine. Anything else? No. Oh. That's good. That's good about the medicine, though. Mmm. He goes quiet again. Does a run usually only last one day? No. Ah. Um, how long does it usually last? Hmm. Longer. I see. We fall into stiff, dogged silence once again. This is our first real attempt at idle chatter. I really have no idea how to talk to him. So, uh... You're outside. Yeah. Hmm. I, um, I was just enjoying the view. View? The mountains. Hmm. It's a nice view. You chose to live outside the village? Yes. Ah. How come? It's a nice view. Well, yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. Well, rocks are more verbose than this hound. He looks over to the mountains, still as a statue, the breeze ruffling his pelt. Did, uh, well, you went to the Black Zone, didn't you? Mm-hmm. That's south of here? You knew this? Your memory has returned? Oh, no, Dravonia gave me the map you made of Elelia. Elela. Elela. Hmm. You went to the village. Yeah, I had a look around. I met Mia. His tail starts to wag happily. She is good. Oh, I was meant to tell you, she was ha having problems with some guy named Barrow. Explain. He was trying to peddle useless salvage off to her. Barrow did this today. It's okay, I spoke to him. Explain. I just told him to back off. He said he was given that piece from some other black runner, a cheetah. Some she swindled him. He was just trying to make his losses back. This was today? Yeah, this morning. Hmm. All right. That was good. It was? It was. Twice now you have used your wit for good things. You will be a great acolyte. Oh, thanks. Uh, about that. Are you really sure you want me to be... Yes. But I'm not from here, Loken. These aren't my people. You have no people. You must learn where you come from. You will find answers in the Black Zones. But... We will talk inside. Before I can argue, he already he's already hustling me towards the lodge. I've been outside for a while. As much as I enjoy the view, I'm starting to get cold again. It's too dark to see anything inside the lodge. I quickly managed to stub my toe on a wooden post. Ow! Careful! Do those light bulbs actually work? Loken stretches to reach a switch above his bed. Oh, that's much better. Sit. 
Oaken gestures to the bed. Without drink, without thinking, I obey his command and plonk my butt back down. The husky kneels beside me. Before I can react, he abruptly grabs the bottom of my hoodie and starts tugging it off me. I jostle him off, bemused by his sudden attempt to strip me. What are you doing? I'm checking your wound. Oh, maybe a quick heads up next time? I'm chuckling lightheartedly, but Loken is sharply defensive. I must check the bandages. Okay, you just got all grabby. No, I was checking the bandages. It's fine, really. You just surprised me, because you're so... I did not try to surprise you. What's he growling at me for? I shrink away from him. I must have offended him somehow? S sorry, it's fine, okay? I didn't mean... Here, look. I pull my hoodie and... Uh... I pull my hoodie and, um, and tunic off over my head for him, exposing my bandage upper body. See? It's okay. Okay. Okay? Be still. He avoids my eyes and begins to unwrap my bandages, ears flat against his head. Now he just looks sad. He's being really careful with his movements, and I can't help but notice he's making a conscious effort not to touch my skin. What did I do to upset him this time? Sorry. Hmm? Um, just nothing. Thanks for checking the bandages. Okay. God, that was weird. What the hell's up with this guy? How do I talk to him without saying the wrong thing? I think back to last night. He seemed much more talkative then, when he was ta when he was talking about his role as a black runner. Maybe that's the answer. So, uh, I'll, I'll be your third acolyte, huh? His ears and eyes perk straight back up, and his tail flexes happily. I repress a triumphant smile. Yes, the last was six years ago. My first acolyte was male. He did not survive the training. Oh, sorry, what happened to him? He ignored my instructions, repeatedly. He fell from a great height. He believed he was better. Hubris. It was his own fault. Huh, still, that sucks. Sorry about him. Hmm. What about the other one? She... He hesitates. She left. Left where? She found another black runner to train her. She did not like me. Oh. I did not like her. She was not a good acolyte. This is definitely a touchy subject. I decide not to press it, given how easily upset he gets. You know, I didn't realize people don't believe in demons. I asked Taki what they are, but she didn't know. Neither did your chief. Are they magic? Dravania said they and the Black Suns mess with your head. I will tell you of them after I have checked your stitches. Really? Alright. That easy. If he is a black runner, I suppose, it's his job to know about them. Loken takes off the last roll of linen. The stitches are holding, although my skin is still strained and dried with blood. The wound looks much better than yesterday. Do not require more bandages. Tomorrow we will remove the stitches. You must wash the wound. Oh, yeah, I could do with a shower. It's nice that you guys have hot water. The springs are better. Springs? The hot springs. Behind the, the, behind the valley. A quick walk from here. Oh, I know where this is going. They're going to show off his body. Huh. We're on to you, author. <laughs> they are better than the water than the water makers in the village. Huh. Explains why your fur's so soft. I reach forward to put a, to point at the fur on his arm. At the same time, he raises his shoulders and my fingers almost brush his arm. And my fingers brush his arm. I pull my hand back sheepishly as he glares, brow tense. It must have looked like I was about to pet him. Idiot. Things are awkward enough with him already. I see him. I see his brow perk up and his ears flick. Hmm. That is why. Loken holds his arm up and pulls the sleeve of his arm back to reveal his arctic fur beneath. His arm stays there, levitating. He's half smiling, his ears pinned back. Is he inviting me to stroke him? It would be far more awkward if I refuse. I also remember clasping his fur last night when he caught me in his arms. I do like his pelt. I carefully run the back of my, uh, my, back of my upturned fingers over his arm, just barely brushing his thick fluff. He's warm, even in the cold. I can feel the dense contour of padded muscle beneath. It's not the first time I've touched him, but it is the first time I've done so of my own accord. Hmm. Yeah, it's, uh... Yeah, real soft. I've just, uh... Just got a uh, skin, so, you know, not as soft. Mm-hmm. His subtle smile lingers a moment. Stay. As Loken bustles around the lodge, I hurriedly tuck my tunic and hoodie back on. Without bandages, my skin quivers sensitively against the fabric. Loken drops something small and heavy on the bed next to me. Without thinking, I pick it up to look at it. Oh, my. Uh, what is this thing? Just look at it. Where did you get it? Do not ask. Look at it. This is... It's off a machine for sure. These are cables. Hmm. It's heavy. Looks like a robot arm or a head? What? what what's that? Look at it. I am... I don't want to. Look at it. Now. Okay, I am... What's it made of? 
Do not ask. Look at it. Okay. Alex, look at it. I am. Stop asking. Keep your eyes open. Can I put it down now? No. Look at it. I don't want to. It, it's where... It's... Where did... Logan, please, I hate it. Do not look away. I'm trying. That is enough. Logan snatches the wretched thing from me and covers it in a cloth. I don't look to see where he hides it. What the hell is that? I'm sweating. I stare at my pale, shaking hands. As soon as I locked eyes onto that thing, it did something. Alex, look at me. Trembling, I do so. This is part of your training. Demons cannot be explained. A black runner must build a tolerance. This attunement may be fast or slow. The four will guide you. You cannot comprehend them yet. You must not think of them. You are not ready. I'm horrified. I feel sick. I want to get up, run outside, and puke, but I know there's nothing in my stomach to throw up. I just... I just... I don't want to do anything with those things. It will get easier. All acolytes must endure this. You'll be a great black runner. No, I just can't. I I'm out. I can't be a black runner. Sorry, I... You will. But... Enough. Here. Logan holds a small cup of water out for me. Without a second's hesitation, I grab hold of it and pour its contents down my throat desperately. The husky sits on the ground in front of me, watching carefully. I still don't understand what just happened. One moment I was fine, blushing over Logan. The next I was... Bite? What happened? Hmm. Heart palpitations, hyperventilating, trembling, and sweating. My guess is a minor anxiety attack. There's nothing minor about that. Did you scan it? I didn't get a chance. But what was it? I've never... Hey, Logan told you not to think about them. But... Alex, do not think of them. See? Just talk to him. I think I'm okay now. I try to pretend I'm alright and ignore what just happened. Good. He goes quiet for a, while, for a moment, watching me. You are small. I guess? Hmm. You are hungry. Oh, uh, I ate at the village earlier. Hmm. Humans do not eat much. We don't. I'm going to be able... I'm not going to be able to keep that lie up for long. I will eat. Hmm. Oh, God. <clears throat> Throat. Sorry, guys. He hauls himself up to his feet and begins rustling around the lodge, pulling open drawer, pulling open drawer after drawer in search of some food. I'm only really now noticing how much of a disorganized mess this place is. He is a scrap metal collector, I suppose. The privy is out back. Okay, cheers. The blankets are comfortable? Mm-hmm. Good. You should use the heater tonight. I will not light a fire. He's taken a few strips of beet jerky and is chewing on them lazily. I move from Loken's bed to back over to my blankets, giving them a ruffle and arranging them into a more comfortable position on the floor. Then, after switching on the electric heater and parking my shivering butt in front of it, I watch Loken flop down loudly on his bed, facing upward, still chewing his food. It's the first time I've actually seen him drop his guard. He's always acted so stern and highly strung. I decide to make another courageous attempt to get to know him. What, uh, what do you want to do to relax? He puts one arm behind his head, and with the other gestures over to his crate, to his crates of, crates of scrap. I maintain my salvage. I have no idea how much maintaining a giant box of rusty junk actually needs. Mind if I have a look at it? I do not mind. I'm almost afraid to touch his salvage, given how possessive he is of his stuff. Most of it is so old, I fear it'll turn to dust in my hands. Alright guys, I'm gonna pause it right here. Ooh, looks like we got our first kind of a look at a machine. Apparently, oh, apparently they really, uh, they do something. They do something to the mind. That's really strange. A machine that messes with your mind. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. That does sound a little bit Lovecraftian, if I'm to be honest. Madness. Madness at play. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. If a super thanks or a tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!